good evening and welcome to this uh, uh, regular webinar series from myself, Charlie Burton, in conjunction with Tickmill. And so tonight's webinar is on divergences and multiple divergences. I've been trading divergences for probably 20 years out of my 27 years worth of trading now so i've probably been trading them for around about 20 years and they are a stable part of uh, my trading so before i go into all of that though and i'm just going to uh, do the usual risk disclaimer uh, as um, i am presenting in conjunction with tickmill a multi-asset broker uh, here's your usual disclaimer uh, slide here like we all uh, have um, with regards to um, uh, trading material all of this trading material is not considered to be investment advice uh, the views and opinions of myself if any are expressed then they are my opinions not that of Tickmill. okay so we are going to this evening go straight to the charts again much like last month in last month's webinar we went straight to the charts we're going to be doing that tonight but before we do that i'll just tell you a little bit about what's coming so oh and one thing to mention um <laughs> i must mention with tickmill is um if anyone here has not got an account with tickmill here's a link so that you can um open an account you don't have to do anything you can just go through the process of it and then then start on a demo account or whatever so by all means give them a try they are a great broker i've been dealing with them now for the last uh probably the best part of the last 18 months and my experience with them has been very good and so um, i would highly recommend you checking them out if you're not already got accounts okay we're going to go straight to the charts tonight's uh webinar is as i've already said is about divergences what i'm going to be going through are the fundamentals of how i trade divergences there are many different types of divergences out there technically in the markets but i'm going to be showing you just some of how i trade them so and you've got to bear in mind i'm going to be trying to squeeze about 10 hours worth of content into around an hour or so so uh, uh, we're just going to see how we get on and this is certainly going to be one that you're going to want to re-watch <laughs> after um after the fact because it's one of those sorts of patterns that you have to get your eye in for most people when they're learning new patterns it takes a while to get their eye in some people traders will pick it up straight away others will be like oh child not quite understanding that i'm not quite seeing that that all i'll be able to say in response to that is please watch a rerun because like i've said i we're we're time poor here this evening uh i've got plenty of time on the evening i'll run for an hour and a half but even that wouldn't be enough so i'm just sort of um, setting this up so um, I'm going to be running through how I approach them. I'm going to go through the basics of the pattern itself, and then we're going to build on that. I'm going to go through the background analysis um, and trends uh, that you can use with uh, divergences. A lot of people um, assume that, yes, good evening, good evening. I'm sorry, I can't say hello to everyone as they come in. Um, the uh, A lot of people assume that divergences are purely counter trend. And so I'm going to dispel that myth uh, here this evening as well. Um, we're also going to be talking about overlaying multiple divergences in a single market and also divergences on multiple markets as well. So we'll be going through that here uh, tonight as well. Um, we're also going to be look, look at uh, the use of targets in relation to these divergences, um, which can really uh, provoke really lovely risk to reward profiles in fact um i'm going to show how you can end up with divergences or uh, and trading divergences and getting risk reward profiles of you know multiple multiple r figures uh yeah thank you johan um uh, jotham sorry right um uh, like I've said, uh, one last thing. Uh, this is a more technical session here tonight. And so 
if you're not following along it's absolutely fine i wouldn't expect you to be able to follow on with along with everything because i'm going to be going through at a bit of a pace and so by all means get hold of the recordings um, i've just said uh, tickmule are uh, building a micro site for me and um on that site is going to be all of my his the historic webinars that we've done together that i've done with tick mill so that's really nice that's going to be up and running in the next two to three weeks is currently the 23rd of may so i've been told about that it's just going through the 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 developers putting it all together and then it just has to be run by their compliance department or all those usual things so so you will have a microsite i'll be able to give you the link next month anyway next uh, we've got another webinar coming up next month um and so you will be able to go back over and watch tonight's uh recording right let's get into this then so let's get rid of the charts and uh, sorry the screenshot and bring up the charts so what i'm going to do first of all is i'm just going to use a pen we're going to take some trend lines off of that chart and um, we're just going to put that to the side for a moment so the divergences that I use, I'm going to go through my settings on my charts and everything. Um, the divergences I use are using a straightforward MACD indicator. The straightforward MACD indicator with the standard settings of 12, 26 and 9. That is the standard setting, default setting in your charting package, whatever charts you use, they will usually default to 12 26 and 9 okay if you use just as a warning if you do use uh mt4 for your charting the the, the standard MT, uh, macd setting uh on mt4 is incorrect because it's mt4 it's a cheap piece of software it's a very good piece of software but it's free and the macd setting isn't great for it uh i do have a um a download for mt4 so if you, all you use is mt4 for your charts do let me know and at the end of tonight's session i will scrabble around and find that download for you and figure out a way of getting it to you maybe we'll get it put onto the mic the the micro site that we're having built anyway so 12 26 and 9 so what I'm going to, and, and what I do with the MACD itself um, is I use the, okay, yep, yeah, okay, uh, <laughs> yeah, because the standard MT4 setting for MACD is no good. <laughs> so uh, it, you can, I've got the plugin basically, a, a plugin, and it's, and that's fine. Okay, so I use the M the MACD lines. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely fine. Don't let's not get confused. That's absolutely a good thing using MT4. It's a good platform to use. It's a good platform to use. I'm talking about the charts in it. They're free, and you know some elements. A lot of the charts are absolutely fine, but the MACD indicator, the standard one, if you just pick it off the standard MT4 list, it's no good. It's not correct in its settings. I've got a correct setting. You can then just upload it into your MT4 and away you go. I will get it to you. You're just going to have to be patient. Um, once it's on the micro site, I will give it to the web developer and we'll get it put onto the micro site. Okay. Right. So, um, I use the MACD lines. I do not use the histogram. So, I... I don't use the we don't I have no need for the histogram I just use the MACD lines so what we're looking at is something like this so this is first of all what we're looking for when we're looking at a divergence now divergences come in all sorts of shapes and sizes but this is what essentially we're looking for first of all now one thing I we're going to put a lot of overlays onto this this evening so I'm just going to show you what a divergence looks like first of all. Then we'll go back to the price action because price action is all important here. Price action comes first and what what the price is doing. What a lot of people, whether they make a mistake, is their eyes go down to an indicator and they're looking at the indicator first and ignoring what's going on on the chart. <laughs> so, but 
for now, I'm just going to be going through the indicator itself. So the very nature of a divergence when we're using an indicator is the price itself comes down, makes a low, bounces a bit, make it come over a bit more, um, and makes a new low down here. So at point number one, over here, uh, the MACD uh, line itself has made a low here. At point number two, as we can see, although price over here at point two has gone lower, the MACD line is diverging, okay? That is simple in its concept. Although some people here may have never seen something like this before, but it is a simple concept, which I suspect that everybody here will at least understand this concept. So can I just uh, double, double check? Everyone's okay with that. So you've got points one, and then you've got points two. Two in price has gone lower than point one, but the indicator is not moving with it. It's going in the opposite direction. Yes, great. Okay, right. <laughs> And it's exactly the same in reverse. So I'll, uh, good stuff. I'll just put it in reverse. So we have a high in the indicator and then we make, do something like this. And this cut, this time we've got price coming up, makes a high. So it's the exact opposite of what I've just shown. Pulls back, comes up, makes a new high. So this is now our point two, point two. Here's our point one here. Here's our point one. Because I'm not, I'm going to go show you lots of examples tonight, but I'm not going to be able to go through the basics of it over and over and over again. Like I said, because it's, this is 10 hours worth of content I'm squeezing into a webinar tonight. So point one, uh, price made a high here. It's pulled back. It's made a new high into point two. Um, but the MACD itself um, is making a lower high at that point. Now, one thing that we need is uh, again I, i'm not going to answer questions on rsi why are why not rsi and macd please i need to keep this <laughs> flowing so this is macd is what i use you can use rsi absolutely you can use rsi but this is all about using MACD because that is what I use. There are other in ways of finding uh, divergences with other indicators. That's not what I use. I'm here to show you what I've been using for the last 20 years. Okay. So, okay. So points one to two, we've got divergences. Um, yes, that's right. Yeah. So um now, one thing at point two is, well, how do we know that at point two, the price doesn't just keep going higher? So we need something that goes on with price over here in this zone to at least give us a heads up that, ah, you know, yeah, price might, you know, start to, to roll over here. So we'll be going through that as well. But overall, you've got the basic pattern. Good. Right. Let's move on. Now I'm going to go to the chart. So on the chart here, I've got the MACD indicator in the bottom window. Now you can say, well, hold on a second, Charlie. You've got two lines on here. Yes, I have. <laughs> so I've got the MACD line and the, si and the signal line here. So um, where you get a lot of the time you get crosses. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. The blue line is the most important. That's the MACD line itself. So we're going to be looking at that, but we will also be looking at when it comes back down to its signal line as well. So that's the indicator at the bo bottom. I've deliberately already taken off the histogram because very often the the um, when you have an MACD indicator, it will it will plot both the histogram and the lines. So for the purpose of this, because I don't need the histogram for this. Um, I've, I've removed it deliberately on the price chart itself. I, I use candlesticks. So I've just got candlesticks on there and I've got two moving averages. I've got the black moving average is a 50 period moving average and the green moving average is a 100. 
Now, they are what are going to come into play with regards to um, targets. So, And really, it's only going to be the 100. But I'll leave the 50 on because the 50 is something a lot of people use. A 50 period moving average and we'll just leave it on anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off just looking at a few examples. And I'm starting off with a really high time frame stuff here. I'm going out to a monthly chart. So I'm going to go out to quarterly charts. And then I'm going to start bringing it down to smaller time frames. And we're going to come all the way down to intraday time frames. Okay. But first of all, I need to show you some of these uh, divergences. So hopefully you can already identify um, there's our there's a point one here. Price has made a low here. Price then made a new low. This is all back in 2017 um, down here. So this is our point two, and it, uh, the blue line is now quite clearly higher at point two than it was down here at point one. Now what was important here for me is that the blue line between one and two, uh, as price bounces before and then of course as it rolls back over i want the blue line to come back and touch that signal line okay i want it to come back and touch or cross back through it either, either way i don't care i want i want that blue line to come back down and touch the signal line and that's why i keep that yellow line on um on my chart here so but the basics are that at points one to point two is there a divergence yes there is right okay so this is on the monthly chart now i'm here to talk to you about all sorts of divergences here tonight uh divergences which are going counter trend which we can certainly make a case that this divergence down here is going counter to the overall prevailing trend i'm also going to be showing you this evening uh uh, divergences which occur within a trend as well so but for now we're just going through the basics of what they look like and how i end up using multiple divergences so at this point in 2017 what had, what had actually happened well and this is what brings me on to my next point um one thing i find with traders is that they they pick up a pattern and then just want to trade it everywhere. Um, so whereas what we really want to be doing when we're trading is to be trading into prior levels, prior support, prior resistance, into areas of uh, supply, demand, whatever you want to call it. And um, we don't really want to necessarily be taking every single pattern out there. This is why I said, you know, you don't go to the indicator first. You analyze the chart first and then say, ah, if price comes down into this zone down here, uh, you know, and we then get a divergence, I'm going to be interested in that on the long side because that's a bullish divergence. Because at this point, when price has come down to the whole 105 zone, it actually actually clipped 103 and a half back then in uh, the uh, the, uh, the beginning of 2017 what was it actually doing well as we can see on my chart here um it was into what prior price levels going all the way back so as it came down now at this point it's just making the first low so it took another two years before this on the monthly chart before this actually developed i traded this tra this divergence some of you here tonight will probably be aware of that uh, if you've known me for a while so it's not just trading it just because there's a divergence in this window down here no you know, i'll put a tick in there but it's not because of that there has to be a reason on the chart to say well you know yeah we're into a really good price level here and we're setting up um a divergence so analysis comes first is my point analysis first so the way to use divergences is to analyze a chart first and then look uh analyze a chart and then say right if price comes to this level or this zone 
or to that zone, then I will actively look for divergences. That's the way to do it. Top-down approach. Analysis first, chart first. Otherwise, what people do is they just look for divergences. And they're always, oh, there's a divergence there. I want to trade it. Well, And then they try and curve fit it to the chart. So you're better off analyzing a chart on whatever time frame or time frames you like to trade off of and then say, right, okay, as price moves into, you know, this area of resistance or supply or this area of support or demand, um, okay, if I get see a divergence down there, then that may set up a nice trade potential for me. Okay, I think I've made my point there. So back here, zooming back in a little bit, we did get a divergence and it actually started um, right at the beginning of January in um, 2017. And what happened next is, yes, price ended up going higher. We were like, carry on clicking up. And it ended up, and I've got to go through a load of uh, trade criteria with you yet. So I'm, at the moment, I'm just uh, talking about the pattern itself. So as price started uh, coming up here, um, like I've said, the we use, I used the moving averages as targets. So um, it did eventually get all the way up to that um, that 100 uh, moving average up there. But again, this is a monthly chart. You wouldn't have necessarily tried to hold on to a trade all that time because that's a, that's a very long time to be holding on a trade and you might have swap fees building up and all of that. Right, there we go. That'll do. So... Why do I have both these moving averages on here? Well, if you want to trade this in a in a very mechanical way, so you've done your analysis, you, you know, you've identified this whole support zone down here. Price has come down into the support zone, and then what's important is we've then had a nice strong bar, uh, um, up bar. Okay, we've had there. That's the first key that we're looking for. A nice nice up bar. Okay, I'm going to talk through the exact entries that I use a little bit further into this. So you've got your exact, you've got your up bar. that's given a given a essentially a buy signal, but just hold that thought for a moment. Um, so the 100 is the target. Okay, years ago I actually used to use the 50 as the target, and you can do that and just use a 50 moving average as a target. But um, I subsequently found through testing that um that actually the 100 is is more profitable holding on for longer now you don't have to use moving averages as targets you can go off and test this sort of thing and and put your own targets in uh, whatever way sort of targets you could use a fixed target whatever you can use your own targets for this but i'm just showing you what i what i have historically used so the point nowadays, what I would, what I would do if I was mechanically trading this, even if I'm targeting the 100 up there, is to that is when it, it does get to the 50, is to move the stop loss to break even at that point. So stop loss to break even once uh, price gets to the 50. So stop loss initially is down at the lows down here. Stop loss gets moved to break even. Break even. At the point of price hitting the 50 and then um you know if you if the 50 has been a long way away and it's a really good run you can you've got flexibility to bank partial profits you can do whatever you want i'm just showing you what i do um and have done historically with this uh these are uh simple moving averages thank you yes yeah thanks for asking that one actually yeah so um Stop to break even at that point, and then this is the target at the 100, okay? Simple stuff at the moment. I'm just teaching this at the moment in a mechanical fashion. What I'm going to do is show how this works, uh, how you can use this in multiple ways as we go through this. Okay, so um, is there anything else I want to mention here? No, that's all fine. Now, like I've already said, that's off a monthly chart. So there are different ways to... At what moment did you go in the trade? Because what you show was already into the future. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. I've well, I've already already had it. Remember back in real time back here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna explain that right now, Johan. So like I've said, this is on a monthly chart. So I've got to wait. The euro made that low at one hundred three and a half at the beginning of January in two thousand and seventeen. All right. Um, there was massive negative sentiment towards the euro dollar at that point. Everyone was calling for what parity at that stage. So from a sentiment perspective, we were actually at a quite an extreme in, in sentiment. Everyone, all the all the talking heads, Reuters, Bloomberg, you name it, all of the uh, analysts out there and journalists were talking about Euro going to what parity. And as most of you know, when everyone's talking about the same thing, it usually doesn't happen. <laughs> so at that point down there, we've got this developing divergence on the monthly chart but in real time i would have had to have waited until the close of that bar there that green candle which would have come in at the end of january which would have meant that you know i would have had quite a you know, a, a wide stop and that's fine if you know relative to the target you can see that it would have been a good risk to reward in fact let's go and have a look at it let's put the risk to reward uh, I can put it on here. Uh, that's a projection. I think this is it. So drag that up to there. Let's, let's just move the chart around. Let's move that stop loss. And that's up at the low there. So that gives a solid risk reward ratio of just under four okay so uh, or four r however you measure it it's all the same thing a one to four risk to reward ratio or four r roughly speaking that okay however can't we use <laughs> um yeah look as i've said at the beginning i'm gonna go through all of the time frames from high time frames right away through to intraday so just bear with me You've got to just be patient. Wait, wait. I know that <laughs> I'm, you're getting ahead of yourself. I'm going to go through all of that. So this is on the monthly chart, as I've said. So, well, what was going on on the smaller time frames? Well, OK, so let's go down to the weekly chart. Now, at that point, I'm just going to reset the scale here. Um, if we take the weekly back to, oh, there we are. Um, 2017, this was that low coming in right there in the January. Was there any divergence? No, there wasn't. Okay, so there was nothing on the weekly time frame. I'm just going to flatten the price at uh, that history there because uh, I'm going to go to the daily time frames now and we're going to whiz this back on the dailies all the way back to 2017. So I'll just use the go to, what I'll do, change the date there, 2017. Okay. Now, what was interesting I've just shown you what ha what was going on on the monthly chart at that stage. Hopefully you can see that coming right away in to that beginning of January of 2017 down here. I've shown you what was going on in the monthly, but you would have had to have waited till the end of the month in order to take a trade, in, in order for that candle to close. But what was actually going on here on the daily charts? Oh, we had a divergence also on the daily charts price made new lows but we've got this divergence here down here so this is where you use multiple time frame analysis so you've already analyzed on the higher time frame all oh, right yes there's a divergence building at this point in real time we know that there's a potential divergence building on the monthly chart well, that's fine, but and I could wait until the end of the month. But in fact, I can get in down here on the on the daily chart and then still run the trade based on, you know, if if that monthly starts to kick in. So by the end, time we got to the end of January, price is already up here. I can then hold on knowing that we've got what? That... um. 
that monthly setup in place. So that then gives, what's that an entry roughly? And I traded this. So I was in, uh, there was actually even, there were even divergences on a four hour chart back then. So I was trading, I was going right away down to a four hour time frame. I was in a little bit earlier down here, but even if you use the daily chart here, got an up bar here at 104.87. So if I now take this back to the monthly, Okay. 10487 put the 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 position calculator back on 104 80 odd so it was about and it was right right back here I'm just looking on the side there okay roughly there drag that right the way up now back up to the low and then drag that up to that 100 by using uh multiple time frames so i've got the monthly chart as my base as my main headline template knowing that oh okay this has got you know it's got that opportunity to run all the way to that week that that monthly 100 moving average up there but i'm actually going to capitalize and get an entry earlier based on the daily divergence and by getting on on the daily divergence my risk to reward now is what what have we just seen there 13.7 so nearly 14 1 to 14 risk to reward ratio and this is how you can end up getting some really good risk to reward ratios based on using multiple time frames and we're going to be showing you more and more examples as we go through this here this evening everyone okay with that so we've got the higher time frame template saying right well once that divergence is is in so to speak i'll get rid of the long tool now once that divergence is locked in and we've had you know a nice big a nice green candle there right okay well that gives us you know a projected target potential right away up here at that 100 good okay blair um so we've got that right away up there at the one at the 100 but we can couple that with what's going on on the smaller time frame and say, well, okay, daily chart, there's a divergence. We're getting off the daily divergence. If if then if then this monthly bar locks in, great. We'll then run the trade based on the monthly in theory. You know, obviously, like I've already said, you know, that this is a theory trade of holding it all that way because, you know, I don't know what the swap situation would have been like at that time. Now, because um, I can't remember what the interest rate differentials were at that stage. If the swaps weren't a problem, then you could just hold it all the way. If the, there were swaps to be paid, then you probably wouldn't. You would just trade in and out of it. So you would use it as an overall template saying, right, okay, on the monthly chart, we've got this divergence here on the monthly. I'm going to get in based on that daily and overall it should work its way up in the end to that the 100 right up there it's got a good chance of getting up to that 100 um so what i'll do though is i'll trade in and out of it yeah and so use it as a template for trading in and out of so um Yes, I'm going to come to that, Alan. Uh, yes, good question. Um, why did I choose 2017? Because I needed to find uh, an example. It's, you know, I'm just using... That's the first example. I've got lots of examples for you here tonight. So <laughs> it's just an example. I'm going to be using a lot of recent examples. The reason I'm using this 2017 example is because it's off of a big time frame, off of the monthly. So I want to show you that... Um, as a you know because it is off a, a bigger time frame and then i'm going to show you other examples off of um smaller time frames as well right thanks aj so um and the, yeah okay so i think that's enough on that one and so you can trade in and out of it just saying well okay i'll have runs going back to the daily charts and um 
if I can go back all the way to, I need to go use the go to tool again, go back to that, going back to the daily charts. Um, and you know, you can trade in and out of it, but overall have a much wider or further away target to saying, well, okay, we've got a big picture going on here at the moment. Um, I'm not going to just sit on my trades the whole way. Um, but I can trade in and out every time we get a pullback, I'll be looking to buy blah, blah, blah. blah. Okay. Right. So using that template. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is we're on a, just back on a daily chart here at the moment. I'm going to go to a quarterly chart and this is important. So let's take these trend lines off. So on the quarterly chart, this is happening right now. Well, over the last two years, because this is a quarterly chart, each candle is three months long. And I'm going to then go back to the smaller time frames. So um, what we can see is, is our point one, is our point two over here. So point one now is what was going on. Funnily enough, that was 2017. That was that low in 2017 now. So we've now got, when we kept rolled over into 2022 here, into the lows of October or late September of 2022, price has gone lower, but we've diverged again. This is on a quarterly time frame. Where's the 100 moving average? Oh, it's right up near 120. Okay. I'm going to come back to the setup in a second, Alan. Um... Uh, as far as identifying an entry candle. But what I've been trying to do at the moment is just show the um, the pattern, just so, showing a few examples, and then we'll start introducing some extra stuff. And then, um, yeah. So um, on the quarterly, right now, we're still midway through this divergence, trying to play itself out. The euro over the last, you know, it's had a lovely up run off of point two down here. And it's got, it's got a bit sideways here over the last, basically over the last year, as the dollar's got a bit sideways. Um, but it's still in the process of trying to work its way up there. So I, right, you know, oh, right now, that's where my analysis is. Um, that in the long run here, on the big picture, I'm looking for uh, long side trades, okay? That, so I can use that information, just like I showed back in 2017, saying, well, the monthly chart, there was a divergence, but we actually got in off of the daily chart. Okay. Well, now we've got a quarterly divergence. Well, what's been going on through all of this here? So let's have a look through all of this and and find some examples. So we know that the much, much, much bigger picture is looking for more upside. But that doesn't mean to say that in the short term that price isn't going to go up and down or whatever. So that's just a template now for, for the foreseeable. <laughs> you know. So let's now go down to the smaller time frames and um, see what we can find. So this is now, I've now taken us to the weekly chart. Now on the weekly chart, that was that low that we've just talked about on the quarterly. Um, and we've come up since then. That was late uh, July, uh, late September of uh, 2022. So this is that move that we've just seen on the quarterly chart. And you can see that the euro dollar has got a bit, you know, overall sideways. The dollar itself has got a bit sideways. But ultimately as far as that big picture divergence is concerned um i need to be keeping an eye out for you know a breakout you know, in that in that direction at some point but even before a breakout could i be using divergences again in that direction well let's have a look uh news doesn't have respect for divergences <laughs> no um these are technical patterns. News is always going to be the news, and news will always move markets around. Which, but that doesn't really matter if you're technical tra technically trading. News is always going to do things and move the markets around. But the patterns are the patterns, so that doesn't make any difference. 
Okay, so let's now come down to the daily chart um, because we've just, I've just shown, if I just zoom out, so you can just have a quick see that, okay, that's that low that happened in 2022. And this is where we are at right now. Okay, so you can just get a sense of where the euro is right now and where ultimately it might be going, you know, into the future. Okay. So what I want to be doing is looking for trade setups in that overall direct direction. Now, I can trade on either side, and I have traded on either side. I actually traded this move down in um, uh, late 23 last year, uh, from the summer of last year to the downside. Why? Why did I trade that downside? Well, funnily enough, for a while there, if we zoom back in a little bit, to that high take us out to the weekly chart that is that high what went on oh funnily enough we ended up doing a divergence down here point one point two point one point two oh we had a divergence so there were other reasons but um but i'm just trying to keep it as simple as possible here so um we had a divergence there. So I did have a bit of that clip there la uh, last year as well. So divergence will happen you know, on either side. So taking us back to the daily charts, let's now have a look at what's been uh, going on um, overall. So we're going to start off with this low over here. Bear in mind, like I've already said here tonight, um, I'm interested in trading when price comes into a meaningful level so for example when price came down into october of last year i'd been on the short side remember all the way down here or say all the way for, for from about 110 down to about 106 i think is where i exited but what happened was um I, bear in mind, I've, I already know that we've got big picture divergence in the background on the quarterly chart. So that's at the back of my mind anyway. So I'm looking for what? Long side divergence is to, to get back on the long side. So as price has come down into all these prior price levels, okay, okay, we've got a technical uh, area of, of potential support or demand whatever you want to call it okay there's no divergence down here all right there's no divergence on the daily charts however all i now need to do is go back um and go back down to the likes of the eight hour chart and i need to just zoom us back a little just quickly take us back to the eight hour chart here we go oh yeah right at that low in october of last year at that point that we were coming down, what did we do? Oh, we diverged down here on the eight-hour chart. In fact, we also diverged at the same time, scrolling it back down here, on the six-hour chart as well. So we're now getting multiple divergences down here. I was trading this with my traders. So um, multiple divergences, point one, point two, in line with the analysis overall. Big picture, support zone, technical support zone. Need to have that as well. We don't just trade any old diversions. Um, we've got the big quarterly diversions in the background. So I'm looking out for diversions. We didn't have any on the daily charts at that point, but what have we got? Ah, we've got some diversions kicking in here on the uh, intradays, six hour chart, eight hour. I can't remember if there was on the four hour as well. Okay. So this is where it really starts to all come together and you, and you can say, oh, right. So find support, find resistance, and then look and see if there are divergences coming in in that zone. So let me just take this back again. Or back on the daily chart. So back down at this low down here and then that 104, 105 zone. Although there wasn't a divergence on the daily, we had multiple divergences on likes of the eight hour chart and the six hour chart and maybe even the 12 hour chart i can't remember now uh yeah we need to see previous support or resistance exactly ryan yeah now 
come, I want to come back. We're just going to, I'm just going to come back to Alan's question. Alan, I just want to make sure you're still there. <laughs> Hopefully Alan's still there. Good. Um, well, yeah, so we need that sign. What sign are we going to use in order to, you know, like I've talked about having an up bar, all right? So what's the rules? You know, what do I use? So what I use, and I'm going to put them on now, I use two, actually, I'll just draw it on first of all. I, two, I use two five-period move exponential moving averages. One set to the high, so they're five-period EMAs, one set to the highest price and one set to the lowest price okay so most moving averages when you put them on your chart they will default to the closing price so it'll take all of the closes exactly irish ah oh, nice to see you down irish dan um so they will default to the closes so what you do when you go to your chart settings you change the default setting so let me just go and put an indicator on let's go and put a moving average on uh, moving average exponential okay i think it's just done it right so if i just bring this up i think it's defaulted to it <laughs> ema right let's go to the inputs okay so let's change that to a five you see the source is the close so it will default to the close i don't want it on the close i want it set to the high ah right there we go so i've now put one moving average on there set to the high price and now what i'm going to do is add another one up to the indicators and all charting packages will do this mt4 will do this um so moving average exponential so it's the only exponential moving averages i actually use these ones uh, all my others are, are simple change it to a five change that setting to the low there we go so i've now got on my chart what I call my bands. Okay, Joseph. So what I call my bands. How are we doing for time? Okay. So um, one moving average is tracking the highest price of the last five bars because it's a five period moving average. So it's tracking, it's measuring itself against the, the, the highest price of the last five bars. The other one is measuring itself or creating a new uh, line for the moving average. Uh, based on the lowest price of the last five bars. And that's what creates the bands. So what I do is coming back to divergences. When I can see there's a divergence coming into play. So actually, let's go back to the, uh, let's just go back to that eight hour chart there. So let's zoom it, take it back. Where was it? Do, 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 do. Okay. So when we had this divergence here, down here, so if this was just on the eight hour chart, actually, it's not the best of examples, but anyway, never mind. Um, I'm looking for a close back inside in between my two five EMAs. That's what I'm looking for, Alan. As it happens on that bar, <laughs> it didn't only close inside the bar, the two five EMAs, it went the other side. Let's go to the six hour, see if that one gives a, better, a slightly better example there. Um, there we go. Right. So I would have got in, no doubt, absolutely no doubt, when I when I traded this back in October of last year with my traders, we would have got in, we'd have seen the eight hour developing, we would, most likely would have been getting in, I say no doubt, I 100% no doubt would have got in down here. So you can see price closed back fully inside the two five EMAs, that's my setup. Stop loss at the low. Right, now let's go back to that example from 2017 on the daily chart so i'm just going to go back now i've changed it back to the dailies go back to that example when it when price made that low in 2017 oh right okay so when price closes back inside the bands here right um uh that it gives the entry now what was funny with this is there'd already been an entry there had already been an entry back here. Price actually closed inside the bands back here, as you can see. Stop below the low. This back in 2017, I was trading this. Or that was back end of 2016. 
it started um, running quite nicely. Had a lovely uh, move up, spiked up, came all the way down, stopped me out here. Stopped me out. We're still diverging. Okay, I'll go back in again. And so I went back in during that day because there was some four-hour divergences back then as well. But even if I was waiting for the daily candle, I'd wait for that daily bar to close. Closes inside the bands. Right, reset, stop at the low. Yes, Dan, I'm going to back to the recent examples. I'm just showing the, the setup now. So I've got loads of recent examples. I'm coming to them. So um, now some of you might say, well, you know, do, do, we, do you have to have your stop right at the low if you just get nicked out, like in that example there? And I'm deliberately showing this example. Uh, I'll come back to your question on backtesting in a bit. But yeah, how did I backtest manually? <laughs> yeah, manually, bar by bar. It takes ages, bar by bar. Nowadays, I have software that I can I use to backtest. But, um, but manually, bar by bar is the only way to do it. So yeah. And I've been trading these, like I say, for the best part of 20 years. So um so as an option you can just say well I'll, I'll have a wider stop and i've back tested this i've back tested having wider stops so you can do that but i like having a relatively tight stop down like at the low if i get nicked out and then it resets well I'll just go back in and take the trade again i'm okay with that but some people don't like to have a uh, a slightly uh, higher win rate so they can say well i'll put a you know a two times average true range stop at the low or something something like that that would be a typical sort of thing two or three so my stop loss is further away yes but then your risk reward isn't quite as good but you know each to their own uh, they're all profitable i've looked at all of this um doing it this way is profitable as well it just alters the risk reward Anyway, I'm 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 going off on a tangent. Um, <laughs> yeah, manual backtesting is hard work. You should, and one one of my pieces of advice for manual backtesting is only do like uh, maybe up to two hours worth at a time, because you fatigue, and then you're more likely to miss stuff and make mistakes and that is the vulnerability of manual backtesting but the thing with manual backtesting is you get to see everything it's all very well saying oh, i'll just put it into a program and backtest it but you don't see anything you just get a sheet at the end saying whether it was profitable or not uh, I'm, I'm not you know i'm not convinced by that if you're going to be trading this stuff it's good to manually go back and scroll back and, and do it bit by bit. Yeah, it's a bit of hard work, but and just do it in in clumps of time. If you sit down and say, right, I've got a whole Sunday, I'm going to sit here for 10 hours back testing. what will happen is you're mentally back, uh, fatigued. So either you've got to make sure you take lots of breaks because you'll start missing little bits and you don't want to make mistakes in your back testing. Okay, so I'm just going back over that to give you the idea of the uh, the setup. Right, now let's bring this all the way back forwards again to go through the recent examples. So I've just gone for a recent example back here. Uh, mine's my own, Adrian, so I, the, I, it's my own software that I have. It's not a commercial, um, it's not a freely available uh, software. But you can use... Um, you can program within TradingView. Um, so within TradingView charts itself, you can uh, you can program for back testing. Anyway, so we've got that example back there. That example, no, by itself, bearing in mind that example I've just gone through from the October lows here, which set up off the six hour chart, the eight hour chart, maybe off the 12 hour chart as well. They more than played themselves out. Because on the six hour chart, the, I don't know where the 100 moving average was, but it was obviously would have been lower down than, than what was on the daily. So they have more than played themselves out. They've gone to all of their, their respective uh, moving average targets. What you can do, which is what I do, is say, well, OK, I'm going to try and run this based on, you know, my other analysis. 
So I'll run trades based on other, my other bigger picture analysis. So you can use divergences to get into a trade, but say, well, actually, I've got some other analysis, which is looking for this euro dollar to come up to this zone, let's say, whatever. So what I'm trying to say is you can personalize it. I'm showing you how I've used this, you know, over the years. If I'm mechanically trading it, as I have done in the past, you know, just saying, well, I'll just run it for the 100 moving average. Nowadays, I don't tend to, I'm usually incorporating it in within my overall analysis. But this is a good starting point is to run it to the 100 moving average on the highest time frame where you've got the divergence. So if you've got a divergence on the six hour chart and the eight hour chart and the 12 hour chart, let's say down here, I, I think there was one on the 12 as well. Um, then you get into the trade off the six hour chart because that's going to give you the very best risk reward profile and you run the trade to the moving average on the 12 hour chart. Yeah. Lots of stuff going on here tonight. Right. Let's go. Let's go further. So because the euro then did a pullback back here into the earlier part of this year so actually i digress no i need to go back one <laughs> within this trend here so and i've talked about trading divergences within trends and i'm going to talk about those right now this is a nice example so we've got the divergences off the lows down here off the 104 lows we've already talked about then the euro dollar started having a a bit of a trend here on the daily charts did a bit of a pullback here into what? Early December of last year. Into what? Prior price levels here. So it's pulled back into prior price levels. It's pulled back into moving averages as well onto the 100 itself. So it's pulling back into a support zone. Those of you who use Fibonacci, maybe it did a, uh, I don't know, maybe a 38% or 50% retracement. I don't know. Um, but it's, pull back into a prior you know price zone at this point so what was i doing at this point when it was pulling back into this price zone okay let's go and have a look i'm gonna go straight there because i remember a lot of my trades this was from december of last year okay let's go and have a look it was diverging at that point as it came down into that price zone on the hourly chart Okay, so I'm going to go to the hourly. I'm going to go take the chart back to 2023. And actually, let's just bring it. What do we say? December. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so as price... On that daily chart, it's just a pullback. The hourly chart looks like a... Obviously, it's a downwards trend on the on the intraday chart here. But what was going on down the bottom? Multiple divergences. Building, building, building. And as price then finally got down into that price zone that we've just talked about on the daily chart. So we, so we, went, so we got the price coming down into that support zone on the daily chart. Then we're going down to the smaller time frames, looking to see if there's any divergences. Multiple divergences on the hourly time frames down here. So guess what I was doing? Yep, I was buying over here when price closed back inside the bands, stopped below the low. And that was the run that it had. Now, in this example... You know, if you're just trying to run it to the 100 on the hourly chart, it's nothing. It's not worth tra taking the trade. So you again, you're looking to take trade it on the you know and run it based on the higher time frames. But that was another example. Going back to the daily chart now, um, taking it back to where we were on the daily. That was what was going on at this point into uh, December of last year, and what a run again price had off of that you could have just run it up to that high and just said oh, okay well you know it's coming to support on the daily chart i'm using the divergence what should i run it to oh i'll run it to that high okay let me go back see what the entry was 
uh, if I go back um, in time again, what was the entry? Roughly down there. If I just zoom out, right, there's that prior height. Let's put that projection tool on again. Just trying to get this right. Uh, long position, so roughly would have been around about there. Stop loss at the low. If you were targeting it up into that price zone up there, it gives a, a comfortable 5R or 1 to 5 risk reward. And so time after time after time, you can couple up divergences with your analysis. Take this back. To identify uh, trade opportunities. And funnily enough, a lot of the time, at the same time, like back here, that the euro was diverging here on the uh, the the four and six hour charts back here, just in February, it was also diverging on the likes of cable. So you know you then get multiple divergences across or divergences across uh, other currency pairs as well. But anyway, so this is the one that I'm talking about over there. So we've had a divergence here. Um, we've had, you know, into, and this is within a trend here. It's just a pullback within a trend. So not every divergence is, you know, oh, outright, you know, a, a counter trend, so to speak. Um, there were no divergences for the euro back down at this low. Not every low or every high is going to have a divergence. There were no lows, uh, sorry, no divergences in the euro down at that low so there was no no divergence at that point um so at the moment um right now we can see the euro as of today is pulling back okay so what would i do be doing right now i say right now but over the coming days well if the euro started to pull back here it's had a little bit of a, a run to the upside I'm looking overall, remember at the beginning of this presentation, that quarterly divergence is still very much in play. So I'm going to be looking to see if there's any divergences appear. They're not going to appear on the dailies. It's not going to happen up here. Price would have to be right down here to, to be a divergence against that low there. But if I go down to a smaller time frame, or like maybe the hourly time frame, um, maybe there at some point, let's go to an hourly chart, there could end up being a divergence. Ah! Oh, well, look at that. What a surprise. Um, there may there may end up being a divergence on the hourly chart. This is live now. For those of you who want recent examples, here you go. This is real time now. In real time, what does the euro need to do? It needs to close back up at some point back inside those bands there. It may not happen. If it carries on going down, then the divergence will disappear, won't it? There won't be a divergence. At the moment, it's a potential divergence. We can see that at this stage live, the MACD line is higher at point two here than it was over here in this zone of point one. So we're going lower. There's nothing for me to do because it's not a guarantee that this is going to turn around. We might just carry on going lower and then therefore the divergence the potential divergence disappears and the MACD comes lower. So you don't try and preempt it. That's why we wait for a big up bar closing back inside the bands. Stop loss is then always below the most recent low. So if I don't know, I won't be I won't be up, but that late. But if this was to close back inside the bands at some point by tomorrow morning, I'm going to be having a look at that. Because it might just drift its way back in overnight, close back inside the bands. I'll be looking at it, you know, providing this divergence is there at that point and it's not disappeared because that could happen and the MACD line goes lower than a point than over here. Well, then there's no divergence. Do you see what I mean? But you have to get your eye in for these. And this is why you're going to need to go back over this webinar because, like I keep saying, you know, I was saying at the beginning, you know, what I'm going through. Most people are not going to take it all in. Uh, they're not going to remember everything 
in you know in in one hit you're going to have to go back over it but um and like i've said you know i'm trying to teach stuff that really i would teach over a period of 10 hours but um at least you're getting a bit of an idea here um darren do you mention uh, measure the uh, the diversions from the wigs or the candle body um well it doesn't really uh, overly matter but um just remember that the indicator itself down here is based on the closing prices so therefore you know in the main you're looking at you know um uh the uh the closes the closing prices yeah but provided when price comes down like it has done here that it's made a new low here below the previous lows then we're we're potentially on for a diversions if we close back up inside the two five emas yes uh kevin uh you do need the macd lines to touch so going back or, or cross yes touch or cross going back to that hourly chart we can see that from point one we'll take this one as point one over here uh the macd lines cross to the upside then they've come back down they've at least touched they've gone through it so that's fine we get a big tick in the box there so uh so yes absolutely thank you for that question good right let's go back to um to this now i'm going to go through some other historical examples oh <laughs> could i repeat no what's the recording i need to move on <laughs> so um some historic <laughs> why they have to touch oh sorry right um it all come it all comes from my my uh my testing uh that i did over the years johan so yeah um they don't always have to you could have a situation uh whereby uh, let's go back to maybe the daily chart here. I'm trying, I, I need to find an example now. <laughs> and, and I won't be able to find one now. But you do have situations where, okay, I'll just draw it on. Where you've got your price has come down, made a low, bounced, and then come down to a new low over here. And then close back inside the bands, let's say. And so... The MACD has done this. So, and it looks more like this. And you've got your other line below it down here. And it's not crossed. It's not, it's not crossed back down here. But essentially, the MACD is still higher at this point two here than at point one. So it is still diverging. It's a personal preference of mine, Johan. As I said at the beginning, I'm showing you how i trade these and how i have historically traded these so it's just that preference and it's what i've always used as a rule so coming back to trading within trends i'm just showing you even within this short-term daily trend at the moment that the bottoms the price made a low back here in april i think it was the 16th of april or something like that um and it's been going up so within this this is now a bit of a trend to the upside on the daily chart so within this the potential on a pullback to go down to the smaller time frame as i've just shown on the hourly chart is there to identify if that you know and see if there becomes a divergence it may not happen but it just so happens as we're going through this live there might be one there now and that's exactly what i've already pointed out over here when there was that hourly divergence back then into early December, uh, over here, it was actually, this wasn't a, a, at that point, at this point, a trend overall to the upside. It was started trending down here, but still into technical support level. So again, at that point, we had the six hour, the eight hour chart, oops, eight hour divergence, maybe the 12 as well. Um, divergence going on at that point into february so again there was still reasons and rationale to warrant if there if a divergence comes along to say yes i can trade that 
I'm going to show you some old examples again, just because they're bigger time frames, they're easy for me to go back to. If I now show you, for example, the dollar CAD here. This is on a monthly chart. At this point, when price came back to this, this is the 50 period on the moving average here, 50 moving average here on the monthly chart. This 50 period moving average was rising. Price is the first pullback into a key moving average. What was it doing? Funnily enough, it was diverging on the smaller time frames at that point. And yes, I do, I traded that. At this point over here, it did a what a three and a half month pullback on the I think it was on the daily charts at that time. It was diverging. Guess what I was doing? Buying this. When was this? Back in 2015. I'm giving all sorts of examples here on all sorts of time frames. So I'm showing some big picture stuff because it's easy for me to go back. Um, and I remember those bigger picture setups. I won't remember every one hour time frame setup that, I, that happened back in 2015, for example. So anyway, um, that's where we are. So we can overlay analysis first. Analysis always comes first. Support, resistance, identifying levels. And then saying, okay, or, or trends. And then saying, okay, we're in a trend and we're pulling back within a trend at the moment. Okay, if a divergence materializes, can I trade it? Otherwise, um, if there's not a trend, then can I trade it anyway if, it, if price comes down into support or up into resistance? Yeah. Uh, there's a lovely example of... Um, This one up here, for example, uh, this one in middle of last year, I've already shown it um, um, earlier, but we had this divergence here on the weekly time frame, and um, I didn't actually use multiple di um, time frames for this one. So, um, but certainly there's been uh, divergences historically going back here. I traded this one. Why did I trade this one? Going into the end of 2020. Well, we got a divergence building on the weekly chart at that point, and right in in amongst all that price action up there, there were divergences on the four hour chart as well. So I was using the four hour time frame to get me in in December of 2020, knowing full well we had this developing divergence on the weekly. And where did I run it down to? Actually, I I did just run it down to the the 50 on that in, in that instance. In the end, it bounced and then rolled further, but for me on that instance because i'd run it off the four hour or taken it off the four hour chart the risk reward was awesome so they happen all over the place and that was into as we can see historical resistance if i just take us out um i've just taken us to a higher time frame now um yeah here it was into that trend line long-term trend line at that point so again i've traded that end of end of uh, December 2020 in coming into 20 the beginning of 21 uh, that was where it was into that resistance big trend long-term trend line all right okay and so on and so forth so that's how you can use them multiple multiple time frames analysis comes first then drill down to the small time smaller time frames and see if you've then uh, got divergences taking place Uh, no, that's not true, Dan. You just don't understand it. Um, the crosses in the MACD, it's, you, the, <laughs> um, that doesn't matter about them being lagging. Um, okay, so let me give you an example. Okay, Dan, right. Um, <laughs> my, my apologies. I shouldn't have said that. So I was being confrontational. And uh, so let me explain to you. So the crosses... So let's go to, um, it doesn't matter the, about them being lagging. Right. This is where I'm saying I don't think you understand. So let's use this example, this live example right now. I don't need to wait for the cross. The cross just needs to have happened. So it needs to have happened to in order to give me a setup. Then it's all about price. I don't need to wait for the, the, these to cross back up. That would be lagging. 
absolutely. That's not what I need to happen. All I need to happen is for the MACD lines to cross or touch over here and then price come back up inside the bands. I'm not waiting for a cross. And that's where I said, I don't think you understood. So um, I've been trading these for a long time. They are not lagging. <laughs> the, the MACD signal lines, like any indicator, uh, most indicators are lagging to some degree or another. But that's not how we're using these. We're not waiting for these to cross back to the upside. I often get people say, oh, if you wait for a cross to the upside, you know, you know, could I just do that? Well, you could do. But by the time these cross to the upside, you see, by the time these cross you know, back to the upside, price might be way up here. So you're then getting in quite late. So, um, yeah. So, no, they're not... Um, you're not waiting for the, the indicator to cross back. Okay, it's just price then. It's all about price then. Uh, do, 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 do you use that type of strategy? Multiple windows, timeframes for diverse and trading, or are you... No, I don't have multiple windows open, Irish. Um, no. Uh, yeah, back in 2011... Um, you're talking about intraday trading. And so I would have the five, the 15, the uh, the 30 minute, the hourly chart all open and the same thing. You can do that by all means, you know, when you're doing your analysis, but that's not what I do because I'm mostly swing trade now. So um, I don't need to have that. But um, so, yeah, you could do that if you wanted to have them all up together. I just change change my, my, my time frames around. I, I, I quite like having a singular big chart if you sort of mean rather than making them into smaller but if you want to do that it's fine yeah is this only for forex sorry i'm trying to come back up to some of the questions here um no 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 uh you can use it on anything um some of my traders actually Chaz, use it quite a lot on stocks u.s stocks they're using it on you know for swing trading um but i you know i don't know about intraday but um but yeah they're using it on stocks i will use it on the likes of the s p you know you can use it on gold you can use it on whatever you like i'm just it's just that i'm just trying to use examples here tonight on examples on trades that i have taken um and it's just easy using in the main a singular uh market so i've just used the euro for example here tonight but um but yeah you can use it on anything uh so uh, right i think i've probably frazzled some of you because there's a lot in this like i said at the beginning uh there is a lot in this um you know there's a lot of little rules and you know analysis and time frames and so i really do appreciate like I said at the beginning, you're probably going to need to watch this again. Um, you'll need to get your eye in. You'd need to uh, do some testing on it as well. And again, and find a way of how you want to test it. I've shown you how I enter and where I place my stops. I do get stopped out, nicked out. And I just then get back in once price closes back inside those two five EMAs again. Whereas other people might want to have a wider stop. And they're still going to have a wider target. So they might say, well, actually, the risk reward is still fine, but I get stopped out less. That's fine. I just like aggressive stops because I really like, you know, when I get the, the big risk rewards. But again, there are so many ways you can personalize it and use it in conjunction with whatever your style of trading is. That so you might say, do you know what? You know, there are certain elements of this. I'm not going to use all of it, but there are certain elements I could incorporate with my own way of trading. And that, to me, is the ideal way to trade, is to personalize whatever it is. So I'm showing you how I've used this over the years, and I continue to use this to this very day. But it's nice that people say, right, I'm going to tweak that. I'm going to look at this. I'm going to look at that, this element, that element. And, you know, do you even need to have the two MACD lines down here? Maybe not. You know, you don't. Do you even have to 
have them cross as uh, someone said well maybe not but that's what i do but and that's how i'm showing it but um um could you change the macd settings and not have the standard 12 26 and 9 maybe maybe you have them more aggressive maybe you have them less aggressive so there's lots of things that you could do with it. So my, uh, I feel that my uh, job here this evening is just to show you what I do with it. And you can do it out of the box, pretty much watch the webinar back and integrate it into your own trading with the same sort of rules. Or you can then go and personalize it. So there you go. Um, just going back over any other questions here. Uh, right, the strike rate. Um, okay, based on your hold on a second, Alan. There's more questions above yours. Uh, you got me confused with the not need to cross explaining in real time. Uh, Johan, um, yeah, that was about okay. Okay, we've got a potential divergence here for the euro at the moment. Okay, there's a potential. Yeah, on the hourly. Remember, we've just gone through this a short while ago. So what I was talking about is that if price starts coming up, as price starts coming up, the MACD lines will do will start doing this, yeah? Um, and what I'm talking about is that you don't need to wait for them to cross back up because by the time they cross back up, price could be miles higher. So that's what I, was, that's what I meant, where you don't need to... You don't need to wait for them to cross up in the direction of the trade that you're, you know, you're looking at the divergence itself. They don't need to. Um, so you've got your divergence as long at this moment, provided the blue line at this point is higher than the blue line at this point down here and price closes back inside the bands, then that delivers a divergence. Right. Um, and if you still don't get it, you're going to need to just keep watching the, the webinars because I'm going to be saying the same thing. Uh, based on your experience on which which cross this strategy works best. <laughs> um, I I look for a cross uh, or a touch, you know, the blue line coming back to its average line. So it can just come back and touch it, provided then the price closes back inside the bands, then yes, it gets a tick as a divergence. So that's what I'm looking for. So that's how I trade them. Oh, there's a secret in that. That's how I trade it. Why? Because that's, for my experience, is uh, personally uh, the better way to trade it. Right. Uh, what's the strike rate? Okay. What I tend to do, Alan, when I'm back testing something, I don't tra take every single divergence. So to say what the strike rate is, is almost irrelevant. Because, again, I'm coupling up divergences in line with my overall analysis and support resistance and stuff. You can't really backtest that because I'm using multiple analysis points, you see. So it's not as straightforward as that. I don't trade, like I said at the beginning, you're not going to be taking every single divergence. You only want to be taking divergences which come with a story around them, i.e., trading into support, trading to resistance, or within a trend. However, whenever I backtest a strategy, I will back I will uh, backtest it in a vanilla sense. So backtesting it with every, um, what's the word? We're backtesting it with, um, you know, as if I was going to take every trade. I don't because I only want to trade them, as I've already said. When they're in line with other stuff, but when I've uh, when I have back tested them, then um, the strike rate will vary depending on the stop loss, Alan. So, for example, with a three times uh, like ATR based stop, the strike rate was up in the sixties and seventy percent. So it was quite a high straight strike rate because the wit because it had a wide stop loss. So for me, what's more important is overall profitability, not strike rate. So I would rather have a lower strike rate or lower win rate, but have overall more profitability because the risk reward is higher. So I would rather have a tighter stop loss. 
which would then give you a lower win rate. Then you'd be looking down in the 40s. Okay. But who cares? It's about profitability. Right. Uh, does conversions and divergence of the MACD signal lines uh, can be used as leading indicators? Uh, no, I don't really use them for that. So, no. Uh, Chaz, you're saying this is brilliant. Well delivered. Thank you. Um, Kevin, do you use MACD divergence over a long time period when there are lots of highs and lows on price in between? Oh, um, yeah. If we go out, if we go back out, uh to this quarterly chart there's no this is over a long time period where there's lots of highs and lows i think is what you mean if i take the all the lines off um it's still a divergence from this point here to this point here uh it doesn't really matter too much about what was going on so i'm just looking at is it you know, measuring two low points here from here to here is this point here lower than this point here so it doesn't really matter what's gone on in between yeah um please share your email no i can't do that but you can check me out if you want to um you can come over to my youtube channel actually you can always send messages via my youtube channel but don't think you can just send messages asking quite countless questions because I just can't answer technical questions count on, on that. But do come and uh, follow the YouTube channel. This I put uh, usually one, usually two videos a week up. I'm only doing one this week, but uh, usually it's two weeks or two videos a week. Um, there you go. That was the last trade uh, video I did just last week, five days ago. Uh, the best thing I ever learned in trading. So, and there's always different topics that I cover off in. Uh, on the youtube channel there so that's just charlie burton trading on youtube so you can check me out over there if you want to get in touch at some point i don't offer out my email sorry um uh thanks maria uh thank you blair thank you matthew johan you've got it great excellent uh <laughs> will we get the webinar as you missed the beginning sadly karen um I don't know. You'll need to get in touch with Tickmill. But what I did say at the beginning, Karen, you would have missed it, is Tickmill are putting together a little micro site with me. And all of my previous webinars, obviously including tonight's one, will get logged, uh, will get put onto there. So um, that's going to be up and running in the next two to three weeks, I'm told. So by the time we get to the next webinar, mark it in your diary, the next uh webinar i'm just double checking now <laughs> i've got it in my diary i'm just having a look off screen uh it's in june of course um twentieth of june thursday the twentieth of june is the next one so certainly by then i'll be able to tell you about you know what the website is for that um so that is coming so it will, all the past webinars will be on that micro site, but you'll need to ask Tickmill and your broker at, at Tickmill about all of that. Uh, yes, exactly, Alan. Finding the balance. Indeed, indeed. Uh, you're a fan of adding to winners. Yes, I am. Uh, how would you do that in the context of these examples? Hey, um, we're sort of out of time. To We're already an hour and a half into this. Um, unfortunately, adding to winners is another presentation that i'll have to do for you so we'll do that one in a future presentation if that's okay uh because it's uh, i can't do that justice in two minutes in answering your question uh uh you're saying thank you was this uh saber uh this was really useful you, uh, you already realized this stuff which i did not know called divergences uh but did not know when to enter the trade thank you again uh Need some sleep on this one. Yes, exactly, Johan. <laughs> yeah, it does. You know, you can't expect to understand a whole pattern and all this process, all, all, you know, all in one session. So, like I said right from the beginning. Uh, thank you, AJ. Another valuable session you're saying. Uh, thanks for sharing the knowledge. Uh, that is very kind of you. Yeah, check out Tickmill. Do do that. Um, thanks, Alan. Sean. Um, Uh, thank you uh, some people i can't pronounce your name so apologies on that one um but lots of thanks coming through so that's really nice your brain is fried richard <laughs> good good
Good stuff. Yeah. Um, the thing is, Richard, it's easy for me because I've been doing this stuff for years. You know, all I've got to do is try and explain it. But for you trying to understand it in one go, like I said at the beginning, this is 10 hours worth trying to squeeze it into, as it's turned out, an hour and a half. I knew it would be so longer. So, um, so yeah, the recording will be made available. Go to Tick Mill, ask them, pester them. But it'll take them f- several days before they've even got the recording. So, uh, but do get in touch with them, asking them for it. Um, but like I said, and then this microsite, by the time we do the next webinar, the microsite will be up and running. Uh, there seem to be some good traders here, Charlie. How would you, one connect for each one, teach one? I don't know what that means, Uh Thanyani, uh, there seem to be some good traders here. How would one connect for each one, teach one? I don't know what that means. And then you put LOL, so I, I don't know. Uh, thank you, David, Jay, William, Jimmy, uh, Alan. We'll check the YouTube channel. Uh, okay, yeah. And um, the pound dollar you gave us on fake out played out well. Oh, did all oh, right. Okay. Well, actually, the fake out webinar. Um, Ah, oh, there was something else I was going to mention on the fake uh, uh, tonight about last month's one because I was talking about something in the fake out, wasn't I? And I've forgotten what it was now. <laughs> uh, pound dollar. Uh, let's see if I can remember it. Oh, yes. Uh, yes, of course. The fake out. Yeah. Pound, you know, multiple touches up here, did the fake out up here, came down here. Took out all the last lows. What's it been doing since? Coming up. Yes. All right. It's down on the day today, but yeah, exactly. Good stuff. Now, you've now, uh, uh, see you've got other people thinking, oh, what's this one? I need to know this one as well. So, okay. Right. I'm going to leave you to it. Thank you ever so much for all your kind comments. And um, the 20th of june will be the next uh webinar enjoy the rest of your days enjoy the rest of your evenings that's me pretty much done and so um thank you for sitting there through tonight's session <laughs>